Recently, I have seen a lot of different YouTube videos talking about the secrets to hitting pro tennis techniques. Now, I don't want to name any names, but if you watched a lot of tennis content, you'll have probably seen titles like this and this and this as well. And I personally find them extremely frustrating. And the reason I find them frustrating is because I'm a very passionate tennis player. I spend a massive amount of time thinking about tennis and trying to become a better player myself and then passing that information on to you. And it took me years to get good at tennis. I played as a junior, I had a number of advantages and I still wasn't that good. It wasn't until I was an adult and I did a lot of education in a lot of different areas that I was able to fix all my underlying problems and become a much better player. And that's why I share this information with you because I know that I'm not the only tennis player in my life that's been frustrated. Most players are frustrated because they're not as good as they want to be. So when coaches make kind of misleading YouTube titles claiming that if only you knew this secret, this one secret that they know because they're the best coach ever, if you learn that one secret, you'll be able to hit the ball like the pros as well. And that's simply not the way it works. Tennis is hard. You have to approach things in a very logical, structured way. And the problem with these titles is they're very clickable. Well, there's a couple of problems. Firstly, they're very clickable. So, you know, who doesn't want the pro secrets? So people click on it, it gets seen lots of times, and then the algorithm picks up on that and it shows it to more and more people, and that basically drowns out the better content that has been titled in a more honest way. And I have learned some of the most important technical things that I've learned from coaches on YouTube. There is some awesome content out there, but it's hard for the awesome content that's titled in an honest way to compete against the exaggerated stuff. The other reason these videos are potentially problematic is they cause players to work on the wrong type of thing. Players are chasing these shiny objects. When you talk to them and you watch them, they're trying to implement this pro technique with their elbow or do all this crazy stuff that's completely inappropriate for them and not the thing that they need to work on. And I believe these videos are a large part of the reason that that's happening. So I wanted to make this video, firstly, to get this rant off my chest, but also because there is stuff that you can do to improve. You just have to be very structured and logical in the way that you approach things. So that's what I want to talk about. Now, it took me a long time to get good with my right hand. Unfortunately, I had to stop playing right-handed because of an injury in a mountain bike crash. Now I've relearned to play left-handed. I've been going at it for just over two years and I've got to a pretty decent level. So I'm very confident that the approach that I'm gonna lay out for you in this video is an effective way for you to become a better player. So hopefully you find it helpful. If you do, it'd be awesome if you give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel before, it'd be much appreciated if you could do that as well. The first thing you need to know is that there's no perfect way to hit the ball. There's no perfect technique. There's no right or wrong in tennis. You've only got to watch the best players on the planet to understand that they all do it slightly differently. There's certain biomechanical principles that all high-level players tend to share, but the precise technique varies based on physical abilities. So the best technique that you'll be able to use is going to be dependent on your physical abilities. So it might look more like the way that the pros do it. It won't look exactly like them because they're the best players on the planet, but it might look more like them. But potentially, based on your current physical abilities and skill level, the most optimal technique for you at the moment might look completely different to them. It might look a lot more simple and a lot more classical in nature. And that's completely fine because if your body isn't physically capable, trying to copy the pros is firstly a massive injury risk. And secondly, it's a recipe for really inconsistent play because to use their technique, it requires amazing timing and most players don't have that. So that's the first thing to understand. It's about finding the best technique for you with your current physical abilities. Now that you understand that, let's talk about what you actually need to do to improve your technique and become a better player. And the most important factor is gonna be the amount of good quality practice you do on a consistent basis. Now there is a big difference between playing regularly and practicing. There's lots of players who play a lot, but that doesn't mean that they're practicing in a way that'll allow them to improve because playing points and playing matches won't let you improve your technique in any meaningful way. It needs to be dedicated practice time and it needs to be done 
in a certain way. You need to be working on the right thing, but I'll talk about that more in a moment. You need to be working on it at the right level of difficulty. If your practice is too easy, that doesn't work. If it's too hard, that doesn't work. It needs to be the right level of difficulty, so reasonably challenging, so that you're not getting it perfectly every time. If you're getting it perfectly every time, then it's too easy. You need to make it more difficult, and then you need to work at that consistently. So it's a very frustrating, energy-consuming process. It takes a lot of discipline and energy in order to be able to make technical improvements. You also need to get regular feedback. So a coach can be useful, but the best way to do it is to record yourself because research has shown that we learn better or more effectively from seeing ourselves on video. It enables people to make technical changes more effectively. And then the fourth part of it is you need to do enough repetitions. So if you practice something, if you start to learn how to do it or you're, you're developing a specific aspect of your technique, you have to do it over and over again, progressing the level of difficulty until it basically becomes a habit within your body. And once the thing that you're working on has become a habit, then it's done. You'll have improved your technique a little bit and you can move on to the next thing and start improving it. So a big mistake that players make with their practice is they don't spend long enough working on each thing that they're working on. But this is how you have to approach your practice if you want to improve your technique. So now let's talk a little bit more about what you need to work on because like I've just said, if you work on the wrong thing, it won't let you improve. And I think this is where it goes so wrong with some of the videos on YouTube and what I was talking about earlier with players chasing shiny objects, focusing on completely the wrong thing. You need to understand that tennis shots happen in a specific order. Your opponent is hitting the ball, you watch them hitting the ball. Hopefully, if you're trying to become a better player, you're timing your split steps so that you land just after they make contact, so then you can read where the ball's going. You then have to read where the ball's going. You have to move and set up in position while you're preparing and setting up for your shot. Then, and only then, do you start to hit the shot, and after you've swung, you then make contact, and you then follow through. So. If you're focusing on the follow through, there is a massive chance that you're focusing on the wrong thing because the follow through can't affect what happens to the ball. You've already made contact with the ball, the follow through is just part of physics. Now, if focusing on the follow through coaching point helps you to do something, that's okay, but you need to understand how this all works and fits together. The same thing for focusing on minute aspects of your swing. There are normally things that players can improve about the shape of their swing, but for the vast majority of players playing at most levels, the problems happen way further on in strokes. And when players send me footage for video analysis, 99, and I mean 99% of the time, the problem is that players aren't set up in the right position for their shots. They don't read where the ball's going, they don't use good footwork, they don't set up in the right position, and because they're not set up in the right position, that's what means that they can't ever develop their technique because they're trying to implement all these precise technical movements from completely the wrong position. So the bedrock of high level tennis is always good quality footwork, movement and setting up in the right position. To help you with that, I've actually created a free footwork program. So I'll place a link to the program up in the corner and I'll place a link down in the description so you can get hold of that and start working on it. Because you've got to fix your preparation first, you've got to be set up in the right position and then you can start to work on the technique. Now, if you're one of the rare players that has fantastic footwork, that doesn't get too close to the ball, that gets set up in a good position, then it's really a case of, yeah, you can start to fine tune the aspects of your technique. Now, the hard thing is there's so many different things to think about. So it might not be 100% focus. You might need to focus kind of 90, 80% of your effort on the preparation, and then you're still gonna be mindful about the technique that you're using, but you have to not be completely distracted by the nuances of exactly what you're doing with the racket if the initial problem is the preparation. So you have to kind of approach your practice in this way. You have to analyze your strokes effectively and go, right, what's the first thing that I'm doing wrong with this particular stroke? And then you have to apply the practice model that I've just explained, working on it over and over again until it's done. So using my left-handed forehand as an example, I spent the first pretty much two years just working on reading where the ball's going and trying to prepare and get the right spacing 
from the ball. It spent, it took me literally two years to fix my spacing because as a right-handed player with a one-handed backhand, you set up reasonably close to the ball. Now a left-handed player on the forehand, that's a much greater distance from the ball. So I've done millions of repetitions of it the other way. So I had to do lots of repetitions to teach my brain about the correct spacing. But then after two years, then I was able to kind of move on and start to work on nuanced things. So from there, I then started to work more specifically on my timing and that's the phase that I'm on now. So I spent the last six months really focusing on timing and I'm starting to get it and starting to be able to kind of hit with a lot more power and with a lot more variety on my shots. But I couldn't have done what I'm doing now if I'd not worked on the preparation at the start. I still program in my footwork patterns, I still work on that side of things pretty much every session, but when I'm doing my on-court practice now, the focus is, okay, how do I get the timing? How do I visualize the contact point? So this is kind of how you approach your practice and you have to do it on an ongoing basis. Once you fix one problem using the previous approach, you move to the next problem and the next problem and the next problem. And that means that improving your forehand is not learning one magical tip, it's doing things throughout time. It's taken me two and a half years to get pretty decent. So you might be a much better tennis athlete than me, in which case it might be shorter, but if you're not the same level athlete as me, then it might take you considerably longer to get your strokes looking anything like this, but you have to approach it in this way. There are no shortcuts to making it happen. Now that you understand how to practice, let's talk about the other thing that you'll need to work on if you want to improve your technique and become a better player, and that's your physical capabilities. When you watch the pros play, the way they hit the ball, the reason they can do that is because they're amazing athletes. They've got amazing vision, amazing coordination, they're strong, they're flexible, they're fit, they're fast. That's why they can do what they do. So you need to make your body capable of doing whatever it is that you need to do. And this means a different thing for different players. But for a lot of players, it's very fundamental stuff. Most players have really poor quality movement. And if you can't sprint safely off the court, just normally, you're not gonna be able to sprint to the ball safely and effectively. So potentially, you might just need to work on improving your running technique and your basic movements. Now, in order to do that, you might also need to work on your strength and flexibility to be able to do that safely. But this is kind of how it works. There are prerequisites to everything you do. And if we think about tennis technique itself, you need to be strong, you need to be flexible. If you wanna get down to low volleys or hit a low one-handed backhand, you need strong and flexible hips in order to be able to do that. If you want to serve effectively, you need strong and flexible hips, strong core. You also need strong and flexible shoulders in order to be able to use modern techniques. And if you don't possess those things, you need to work on them until you possess them. Because if you don't have those physical attributes, trying to use modern techniques is a recipe for getting injured. But then the other big thing that holds players back is their level of skill, their eye to hand and eye to foot coordination. You need to be able to read where the ball's going. You need to be able to set up the right distance from the ball, you need to be able to start your swing at the right time. All that stuff is based on how your visual system is functioning and most players' systems don't function well enough. And then it comes down to coordination. Can you control your body well enough and coordinate it independently and in order to sequence your kinetic chain and adjust to the different shots that you're gonna be trying to hit. And again, the reality for most players is they're not coordinated enough to do what they're trying to do. And this is one of the big reasons that players get held back by trying to learn modern techniques. The timing requirements are insane. So when players try and do it without those skill levels, they occasionally hit amazing shots, but they make way too many unforced errors because it's an inappropriate technique for them. So the solution to that is to train and improve your vision and your coordination. And that's actually one of the main things that I help players with. I actually help players with strength and flexibility and working out what to work on and how to structure their practice as well. But most players come to me to improve their visual processing speeds, their ball tracking, and their coordination. If you'd like to learn more about that side of things, I've got a class that's gonna teach you all about it. I'll place a link up there and I'll place a link down in the description so you can check that out if you're interested. But this approach that I'm laying out, as I said, I was able to get to a pretty good level right-handed. I'm now starting to get to a pretty decent level left-handed. I've taught this approach to lots of other players and they found that to be effective as well. I wish there was a shortcut, or maybe there is a shortcut. I just didn't know about it myself. Now, there's, there's no shortcut to any of this. You have to be very systematic in the way you approach things. 
unless you approach things systematically, you just end up spinning your wheels, very frustrated, chasing shiny objects, buying lots of different programs, and never really making any meaningful improvements that translation or translate into better results in matches. So hopefully all of what I've described makes sense. Hopefully you understand why I spend so much time talking about this kind of more boring side of things. It's because this is what it takes to actually improve. So if you did enjoy the video or find it helpful, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, again, it'd be awesome and much appreciated if you could do that. And if you've got any questions or comments about what I've talked about today, I would love you to leave your feedback down below. Okay, catch you next time.